Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCann and welcome to this Wayward Art Company tutorial on creating a nature scene in Blender. In this video I'll just be going over how I created these rocks and the trees and the ivy and also of course the grass. So we'll start with the grass by deleting the default cube and typing shift A and adding a plane. And then rotate it on X 90 degrees and move it up so that the pivot point is at the 3D cursor and then I can scale it on X so that it's about the width of a blade of grass. And with Control R, I'm going to add three loop cuts in the middle. Now I'm going to select the top two vertices and type Alt M and choose Merge at Center. And then do the same thing for the bottom two vertices. Then I can select these two edges and scale them in on X, which gives the, the blade of grass a little more of a diamond shape. Then I'll tab into edit mode and unwrap this with a project from view. And I'm going to switch over to cycles render. And I'll give it a new material. And if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can just press control T, which adds the texture node and mapping and coordinate node. And for the textures, if you go to my YouTube channel and click on the Facebook link, I've uploaded a few textures here, which you can just click on and then, uh, you know, choose options and, and then download to get those textures. So this is the grass texture that I'm going to use. And so it's just, you know, several strands of, of uh, different shades of grass blades. So I'll move it over to the first one and scale it up. And I'm also going to uh, scale it on X. And the reason why is so that you get more of that uh, those um, you know individual lines of the texture you know in, in, in each individual blade of grass. And now I'm going to add a simple sky texture to the world material uh, so I can set up the grass material in more realistic lighting. Okay, so I'll type Shift A and add a transparent shader and mix it with this diffuse shader. And then use the alpha from the image texture as the factor of that mix shader. And while that's not really important for this individual blade of grass, I do have this one little section in the middle, which is supposed to, I suppose, simulate a uh, you know, grass that's been, you know, damaged or dried at the end, which you typically see in grass. Those, those, you know, many of the strands have like a damaged or dried tip. So, um, so that's why that's there, but you'll need that, uh, that transparent shader. Now I'm adding a translucent shader and an add shader and mixing that with the diffuse and the color of the image texture will go into the translucent shader and that will allow light to pass through the blades of grass, which is really the most important part of a, uh, of a plant shader, I think, or, or the material for, for grass or, or something like leaves, is to have it interact with the light, because without it, it'll look very flat and, and sort of unnatural. Uh, so now we're going to start bending the blade of grass so that it looks a little more natural. And I'm going to change my pivot point to the 3D cursor. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode and use Shift W, which is the bend tool, to just sort of warp the uh, the blade of grass. And depending on where you where you start from the the position or the 3D cursor, you'll get a little bit of a different effect. So you know, play with it a little. So that looks pretty good. So I'll go to top view by hitting seven on the numpad and typing Shift D to duplicate it, and then rotate it on Z 45 degrees, and then use Shift R to repeat that process until I have this sort of star shape. And now all those UVs are over top of one another, so if I go down to my UV island select here, I can just grab each individual blade of grass and just move them along the image texture. And I'm just going to stay within the, the green grass textures right now. I'm not going to um, use those three dry grass textures on the end yet. That will be a little later. Uh, but I'll, so I'll just divide these UVs between 
those uh, few green grass um, strands. Now in the toolbar, I'm going to, to click on the smooth shading, but you can still see this uh, these jagged blades of grass. So I'm going to give it a subsurf modifier and and give it the uh, a render of two. In the viewport, we can keep it at, at zero, but I definitely want to render it at a higher resolution. So this is just going to be our template. We're going to be uh, creating several different little clumps of grass just from this, this, you know, the one individual template, like I said. So I'm going to, to label this grass. And then if I duplicate it, you see that down here now it says, you know, grass point zero zero one. So what I want to do is try to make each individual um, I guess group of grass a little different. So I'll just select a few random you know, strands and rotate them and then duplicate all of them and, and, and uh, you know, scale them down and bend them with Shift W and duplicate them again and basically do the same process. Just rotate them and, and, and bend the, uh, the blades of grass so that you get this unique little uh, clump of grass. So that looks pretty good. So now I'll move this clump of grass off to the side. I'll move it back to the corner of the grid floor. And I'll duplicate the second one down. And this will be grass point zero zero two. And I'll just do the same thing. I'll, I'll select a few random strands of grass and rotate them. And then, uh, and also, you know, you can move the UV so that you know, the ratio of, of um, I guess, you know, the textures are, are a little uh, different in each clump. So maybe, you know, in this one, I won't have any of those with the, uh, the dried ends. And instead, they'll be mostly like the, the deeper green texture. Anything that you can do to make each individual clump of grass a little different will ultimately help in the end. To, uh, to keep you from seeing a, a repeating pattern in your, uh, in your particle system. So I've gone ahead and I've made 36 of these individual clumps that are all unique. And I promise you, you know, you don't have to make this many, but the more you do make, the, the better results you'll get. But I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate all of these and then move them over. And now we're going to be using an add-on that uh, it isn't in Blender. You have to download this and install it from a file. So just do a quick Google search of UV Align Distribute. And there are several websites that have links to this um, particular add-on. But, uh, but this user, Rebellion, has created this really useful add-on. I use this for almost every project that I, that I do in Blender. Um, but essentially what it does is in the UV image editor, you can select all of the UVs and then type the, uh, just click on the V and H axis and it, it just places all the UVs over top of one another. And now I'm just going to position some of these over these, uh, these dry uh, grass textures. Although with the dry grass, I, I tend to leave a lot of... Um, green grass strands in as well because I feel like it looks a little more natural uh, rather than having it be all all dry. But I'm pleased with the way that that looks so I'm ready to start making these into groups and the way you do that is you just um, I'm going to press B to use the box select I'm going to box select this whole side and I'm going to make sure that one is active. I'm going to press control G, which makes it a group. And then I'll just label this group green grass. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll just make sure that the camera, the lamp or nothing else is in the way. Then box select it and make sure that one is active and then control G and I'll call this one dry grass. Okay, so I'm just going to type B to use the box select and select everything and move it to a separate layer. And now I'll type Shift A and add a plane. And in edit mode, I'll scale it up to about the size of the grid floor. 
and press W and subdivide it and take the number of cuts up to 100. And I'm going to add a displace modifier. Then go to the textures and select the displace. And instead of image or movie, I'm going to use the cloud texture. And you can just, you know, adjust the size and the, the depth detail uh, to whatever you prefer. I'm going to do a size of 1.80 and the depth of, of 24. And now I'll type the O key and, and select some areas of the mesh and just use proportional editing to sort of uh, sculpt out uh, just a general shape of the landscape. You could also use the grab uh, brush and the sculpting tools, but just, you know, whatever you can do to, to kind of create the general, the general form of the landscape that you want. Now in wireframe mode, I'm going to box select all of these vertices that won't be seen in the camera view, and I'm going to delete those faces because we don't need all that extra geometry. Now I'll go to my weight paint and use the weight gradient selection. And this will add a vertex group so that when we add our grass or our particle systems, um, you know, most of the grass will be in the front and it'll sort of fade out to, uh, to fewer grass particles uh, in the back. So I'll just relabel this um, vertex group gradient. And now I'll tab into edit mode and unwrap and we'll give it a new material and a texture. And I'm just going to grab a texture off of uh, CG Textures. I had planned to have all of the textures be my own, um, but just sort of ran out of time. And uh, I, will, I will eventually have more textures available, though. So now I'm just getting my sun lamp set up to get a little more of uh, a dramatic lighting on the landscape. And I'm going to plug the color of the image texture into the displacement on the material output, which will help give the uh, landscape a little more detail in case any of it shows through uh, the grass. But now with our landscape selected, we can go to our particle system and click New and change it from Emitter to Hair and then click Advanced. Then I'll scroll down and select group and then select green grass and if you notice the grass is sort of lying on its side at the moment uh, so all you need to do to fix that is scroll up to the rotation and check that box and switch it from hair to global x and now everything should be standing up right and while i'm in the rotation i'm going to give the the random a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a value okay so that looks good I don't want to um, give it too much but a little bit of randomness looks looks good so I'm just going to change the name of this particle system to green grass and I'm going to take the the emission number down to 500 because I'll be giving this a a uh, uh, some children, which I'll just do here, select the interpolated. And under vertex group, I'll select the gradient under density. And then add a new texture. So I'll just, I'll go into um, wireframe so that you can see the, the effect that the textures have. create a new texture and call it green grass. And then I'll go to my texture panel and find that particle system texture. And instead of image or movie, I'll select clouds. And I want to deselect time and I want to select this length. And now the, the lighter values of the cloud texture will make the grass taller and the, where the, uh, the darker areas are, the grass will be shorter. So I can adjust the, the size and the depth uh, to whatever I think looks good. I'm also going to check the ramp so that I can use the, uh, 
the color ramp too. The color ramp is especially important because we'll be reversing it for the dry grass um, when, we, when we get there. You'll understand why. So it looks a little tall to me at the moment, so um, I can take the under velocity, I can take the normal value down to make the grass a little shorter. And now I'm going to go to my display setting and change it to 10%, and that will make the viewport run a lot faster. And I can add a second particle system, and I'll call this one dry grass. And the settings are going to be exactly the same as we did for the green grass. The only difference, of course, is for the group will be selecting the dry grass. And now underneath the textures, we'll create a new texture and call it dry grass. And then underneath of the texture settings, uh, we're going to basically do this the same as well. Um, we're just going to adjust the size uh, pretty uh, pretty much the same way that we did for the, the green grass texture. Uh, and the only difference is, is underneath of the color ramp, we're going to uh, click these little two arrows, which reverses the, the values. So now in the areas where the green grass is shorter, uh, that dry grass will be much taller and, uh, and vice versa. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I think the only difference that I'm going to do between the green grass and the dry grass is um, is I'm going to give the uh, dry grass fewer particles. So I'll take the emission count down to 400. The green grass was 500, but the dry grass will be 400, and that way um, it'll look like those areas are a little patchy, and maybe you'll see some of the uh, the dirt you know underneath. I can take the display down to 10, which again will speed up the viewport. And the rest of this looks pretty good. You can just make some little you know, adjustments to, to get it the way that you, you like, but for the most part it should be okay. One more thing I want to do for the grass material is just plug the the color of the image texture into the displacement on the material output. Um, it's a, just a tiny little bit of detail, but if you shine a sun lamp on it and the camera is close enough, you'll definitely uh, notice the the difference in the in the uh, the overall like the roughness or the texture of each individual grass blade. So uh, you know it's just it's a real easy way to add a little more detail. So I want to add some large stones to my scene. So I'm going to go to a different layer and I'm going to type Shift A and add a cube. And then from front view, I'm going to tab into edit mode and then just rotate it on an angle. And then select the bisect selection over here in the, the toolbar and drag a line through and then underneath the options I'm going to choose fill and clear outer. And then I'll just keep repeating that process until I don't have any sharp corners on the cube anymore. Once I'm happy with the shape I can press N to bring up my options. And, uh, and take the mean crease all the way up to about a 0.9. And then go to Face Select and type Control F and choose Triangulate Faces. And now I can add a multi-resolution modifier and, and the mean crease will keep all of those edges nice and sharp. So I'll just subdivide a few times. So 
So now I want to to do some sculpting to get a little bit of detail in the uh, into the surface of the stone. So I go, I'll go to sculpt mode and I'll take the symmetry off, and I'll use my clay strips brush, and I'm going to hold Control so that it takes away and and that it doesn't you don't want you know you don't want it to add you want it to uh, to subtract from the mesh. So I'm just kind of uh, you know, scratching over the surface of, e of each of those flat edges. And putting a little bit of, uh, of detail into it. And you know, I'm going to use a normal map too, along with the texture for, for added detail. But, but, um, but I find that sculpting the stone does help to make it a little more realistic. Okay, so now I'm going to give the stone a material. And I'm just using another texture from CG Textures. Now currently it's set to UV coordinates, but I'm actually going to use the camera coordinates because uh, I find whenever you use the, the multi-res and, and you sculpt, it stretches the UVs and there's really not, not a way to uh, correct that so um, using the camera coordinates though really um, it, it works best so now I'm just adding a normal map that I created with a, uh, a program called crazy bump and I'm mixing the diffuse with a, a glossy shader and now I'm just going to plug the normal map into the normal input on the diffuse shader and type shift a vector normal map and then plug this also into the uh, the normal input on the glossy shader and you can start to see the the normal detail there and now i'm going to add a converter rgb to black and white and plug the the stone texture into it and then into the factor of the mix shader I'm also going to type Shift A and add a color, brightness, and contrast. And here I can sort of uh, simulate a, a specularity map just by taking the contrast up a little bit. And I'll also plug the texture into the displacement to give some finer detail. So I'll type Shift A and Converter Math Node and set it to multiply and I'll, I'll take the number down really low and uh, and take the normal map value down too and that will give um, some uh, some finer detail over top of the uh, the detail from the normal map now I'm going to make some uh, some edge scratches on the stone by duplicating the texture node And I'll just mix these two together with a mix RGB node. Uh, and create a little bit of space so I can add a not mix RGB, a RGB curves. I'm going to add one to, to both of these image textures. And the one on top, I'm going to bend the curve down so it's darker. And the one on the bottom, I'm going to bend it up so that it's lighter. Then I'll add a, a input geometry node and plug the, the pointiness attribute into the, uh, the mixed value and then add a color ramp. Now temporarily I'm going to unplug that bottom texture and just create a red color so that we can see the effect as we, as we drag the uh, color ramp values together. And now you can see how the red is sort of just gathering along the tight edges of the uh, or the sharper edges of the of the stone. So I can just tweak it until I get like a nice sharp value. And that looks pretty good. So now when I plug that lighter texture back in, it will look like the uh the edges of the stone have been, you know, worn off or they're you know, just uh dry and, and worn. So I'm pleased with the way that that looks. So now we can uh, 
uh, start adding them to the scene. So I'm just going to tab into edit mode and start duplicating some and scaling them. And, uh, and just sort of positioning them around so that they look like they're in a, you know, like a large rock pile. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. Now we can just move this back to the first layer with the, the grass and then position that in a spot that looks good. Once I have it in a good position, I'm also going to duplicate it and just uh, and move it into the back. And this duplicated version, I'm going to take the, uh, the multi-res uh, preview and render down because it's going to be further in the distance and I'll probably use some depth of field so it doesn't need the same amount of detail. Now I'm just adding a plane so that I can add a an image to the background. For the time being I'm just going to use a, a texture of a, uh, an image of a sky although I, I'll probably change it. I just I, I find that it helps to um, to have something there when you're creating a scene to um, to uh, to help you envision the the final result. Now I would like to create uh, some moss on these stones. So I'm going to select the ground and these rocks in the background and the sky. And I'm just going to hide them with H. And uh, so now I just have these to work with. And I can just select some of these faces. I'm only selecting the faces that are, are um, facing the, the direction of uh, where the sun is shining on them. As you can see down here in this little test render. Uh, so these are the sides that are going to have the moss. And I'm going to go to my object data and create a new vertex group and add those. And I'll just call it moss. Now I'll create a new particle system. And it's going to be hair. And under vertex groups, I'll choose moss. And I'll click advanced and I'll take the normal all the way down to like a 0 0.01. All right, so now it's very small. And I want to go all the way down to my cycles settings. And basically, I just want to reverse this so that the, the root size is very small and the tip is a little a little larger and I'm exaggerating this right now um, but that's just so that when I after I add some children I can um, you know add some effects to the uh, the overall look of it and I'll actually be able to see see it in the viewport uh, but ultimately at the end I will want to make that a lot smaller so now I'm just creating a, a new material and I'm going to go to CG textures and find a moss texture And so I'll, I'll open up that moss texture. And the reason I'm using a texture is because uh, the, the particle system will actually take the uh, colors from each of the individual pixels and, and sort of, um, uh, you'll, you'll see that, you'll see the variety of all the different colors in the texture in the individual hair particles. So, uh, but I'm setting this material up the pretty much the same way that I did the, the grass. I'm, I'm adding a, uh, a translucent shader to the the diffuse shader and you can't really see it too much now but I'll add the children I'll use the interpolated uh, children and that's starting to look okay Uh, so here under these children settings, I want to, if you see if I take the clump setting all the way up, um, the points at the tip start to meet. But if you drag it in the other direction, uh, they'll actually start to spread out kind of the way that, um, 
like most plants do they they at the base they're sort of tight together and and they sort of spread out towards the tip uh, and that's that's kind of what we want and then I'm going to take the end point value up a little bit which sort of um it just sort of uh, I guess fluffs out the end of the, uh, the the particles and makes it just look a little more full and I want to give it a tiny bit of Brownian motion or Brownian force uh, just to create a little bit of like uh, I guess yeah, chaotic uh, motion in the particles so that they don't look too, uh, I guess, uniform across the surface of the stone. All right, I want to use the generated coordinates of the uh, the texture, not not the UV. So now you can see a little bit of that color variation in there. Uh, so all the way down at the bottom, I'm going to switch the shape to ribbons. And I'm going to give this a new texture. And I'm going to use the Stucky procedural texture, but there's you know a lot of different ones to choose from. Um, you could use a you know Voronoi, or you could use the clouds again. Um, but I'm just trying to break up some of the shape and and um, you know maybe leave some patches where there's no moss, and and then in other areas I want the uh, the length to be. Uh, you know, varying in, in its, you know, in its size. But that's looking pretty good. Again, for the final render, I'll take the size way down. But I do think it's uh, a little bright, so I'm going to add a, a RGB curves. And I'm just going to bend the curve down a little so that it, it matches a little more closely to the color of the grass. And now we're ready to add some trees to the scene. So I'm going to go to a new layer. And I'll type Shift A and add a cylinder. And I can take the vertice count down because I'll, I'll be adding a subsurf modifier. So I'll just uh, set it to 16. Then I can delete the top and the bottom faces and press S and then Shift Z to scale only on the X and Y axis. And now I just want to, I want to add some uh, edge loops with Control R so that they're, um, they're pretty even squares all the way around the cylinder. And I can now use proportional editing to give the the uh, tree an interesting shape so that it isn't so, you know, flat and boring. Now I want to unwrap this by just unwrapping a single face and then choosing the individual edges of the UV and pressing W and auto align. And once that's straight, I can select the rest of the mesh and type U and then choose follow active quads and that unwraps the texture nice and flat. So I can smooth shade the cylinder and now I'm going to go to my modifiers and choose subdivision surface and take the view and the render up to about four and now I'll give it a displace modifier and then go to my textures and I've already created a displacement texture from a, a uh, tree bark texture that I got from CG textures so if you don't know how to do that then just um, you know find a tutorial on YouTube there's you know hundreds of them so uh, it's pretty easy but this tree is going to be very close to the camera so I want this extra detail and now we can just work on the material which I'm just going to give it this uh, this tree bark and I'll scale the UVs down okay I think that looks pretty good
I'm just uh, adjusting the strength of the uh, the displacement modifier until I, I get something that I like. And yeah, I'm liking that. I think that's that looks pretty good. So I'm going to add a glossy shader to uh, the diffuse shader, and I'm going to mix it with a mix mix shader and then add the normal map as well. And I know that I'm going through these materials pretty quickly in this tutorial, but I assume that most of you know how to add um, normal maps and specularity maps and, and do all those things. If you don't, again, there's, there, there's so many tutorials that explain how to uh, do the simple process of adding a basic material, which is just the the diffuse shader and the glossy shader, and then normal maps and specularity maps um, to uh, to define the extra detail. Uh, although you know, again, without using specularity maps, I just use the uh, the RGB to black and white and the brightness and contrast to sort of create my own specularity map if I if I don't have any already available. Okay, so now I'm going to add some ivy to this. Uh, so I'm going to tab into edit mode and move it up so that the pivot point is at the bottom of the tree. And I'm going to set the 3D cursor in front of it, wherever I want the ivy to spawn from. And you need to go to your user preferences and add-ons and then just type ivy and enable the add curve ivy generator. And while we're at it, we might as well do the same thing for the sapling. Okay, so now I'll type Shift A and add Curve and Ivy, and you can see it there. So I don't want to click on anything because I'll lose my options over here to the left. Um, so I'm just going to make this window a little bigger, and I'm going to increase the Ivy length to about four, and then update it. Okay, so that's nice and tall. That looks good. Uh, and then the random weight I'm going to take up a little bit. Now I'll update that as well. Okay, I want it to fall a little further, so I'm going to, to increase the random weight a little more and update it. Okay, that looks a lot better. Uh, so now I'll take the leaf size up a little bit, and then the leaf probability I'll take down, which will just, you know, have fewer leaves, because it's a little too full right now, I think, in my opinion. Maybe take it down a little further still. And then update it. And these options do a lot of different things. Uh, really, if you have an idea of what you want, um, you know, you'll just have to play with all the options until you, you know, get get what it is that you're looking for. But um, I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my materials. So first, I'm just going to uh, select the vine itself, and add a texture, and I'm just going to use one of the textures that I already have in here. I'm going to use the uh, the soil texture, so that, uh, that dirt texture that we added to the landscape. I'm just going to use generated, and um, and that'll be fine because I just I just wanted to give it some color, really. It's going to be too small to actually see, you know, a whole lot of the detail. But now we can add the texture to the leaves, and the leaves are already unwrapped. So now I'm going to select that other texture that I've provided on Facebook. It's a, it's a texture that has three different ivy leaves on it. Um, I, I feel like using the, this versus just a texture with one kind of leaf, it just helps break up that uh, repetition in the ivy. So uh, I'm just going to scale this down so that it fits over the middle leaf. And now in the material, I'm going to type Shift A and add a transparent shader and mix it with the diffuse shader and use the alpha from the texture as the mix factor. 
And again, I'm going to type Shift A and add a translucent shader. And then mix it with the diffuse shader, not with a mix shader, but with an add shader. And then plug the color from the texture into the translucent shader. And now I want to apply some of these other leaves from this texture to uh, some of these random faces. So in edit mode, I'm just going to go to select and then choose random. And that chooses 50% of those leaves by default. So I can just take the 50% that's selected and just move it over to another leaf. And just scale it so that it fits properly over that leaf. And now I'm going to choose random again, but this time I'm just going to choose, uh, well, you could choose really whatever you want. I'm going to go for a, a smaller value, I think, something around like 25% and then move it down to the, the first leaf in the texture. Now it's always sort of bothered me that all the leaves in the IV generator face sort of the same angle. So I just changed my pivot point to the uh, individual origins and with random faces selected, I'm just pressing RR, um, that's R twice which just rotates the faces on individual origins. So I'm just selecting random faces and then rotating them slightly on their individual origins. And that's just kind of, you know, creating a little bit of chaos to those leaves so that they're all sort of facing different directions. Now I'll just move it to the first layer with the, uh, the landscape and the rest of the scene. And I can just position this near the camera. So now we'll use the sapling add-on. I can just put the 3D cursor wherever I want the tree to spawn from. And I'll type Shift A and go to add curve and then sapling. And then press T to bring up my options. And I'll load a preset of black oak and then just scroll through the random seed until I find one that I like. This one I like because the branches follow the curve of the landscape. Now I'll just take the scale down so that the tree fits better into the scene. And I'll check the bevel box to give the tree the, the uh, actual geometry. Now I'll go to branch splitting and I'll change the levels from two to three, which gives the branches a little more detail. And then I'll go to branch growth and I'll just change the length of the trunk, which is this first option down. And again, just like the IV generator, you can play with these options to, you know, get, you know, different, different shapes to the branches and, and so on. But now I'm going to add leaves and I'm going to change them from hexagonal to rectangle, rectangular. And I'll take the percentage of leaves down to, to 10.0. And everything else is probably okay. Again, these trees are going to be in the background, and I will be using depth of field. Uh, so, the really in this case, the detail won't really matter too much. Um, I'm more worried about the the overall shape of the tree and how it fits into the scene. Uh, so, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to save my file, and then I'm going to select the tree and type Alt-C and then convert it from a curve to a mesh. And now I can just give this a quick cube project and add a new material. And I'm just going to open that uh, tree bark texture that I had from before. And I'll plug the image texture into the displacement too, just to add a little more detail. But again, it's gonna be pretty far from the camera. 
so I'm not um, terribly concerned about the, uh, you know, adding a normal map and all of all of that extra detail. And then for the leaves, again, they're already unwrapped, so I'm just adding a a leaf texture that I got from CG Textures. And doing this the same way as before, with the transparent shader and the translucent shader. But really, that's the basics of creating a scene like this. It, really, all that's left is just positioning all of the objects around your scene until you have something that looks visually appealing. Uh, but I hope you guys liked the tutorial. Um, I am planning on doing more tutorials like this and, and offering more textures. So like and follow me on Facebook so that you'll um, have access to those as I add them. And I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching.